and welcome. In this presentation on statistics, I will be looking at tally charts, bar charts, histograms, and the relationships between those particular charts. Typically when we do a survey, we would collect the information and put it in a table, such as a tally table. This situation here, the survey has been conducted and we've been asking people of their favourite sports. And you can see here, here is the tally. And then, and then, and then, and then we've totaled the tally to find out the total numbers for each of those sports. Now, whilst this information is useful, it's not easy at a glance to determine which was the favourite sport. And you can see here, the same information has been presented in a bar chart. So quite easily, you can see that hockey was the favourite sport. What you should notice, that there is spacing between each one of these columns. And that was one of the key I suppose the key categories or the key properties of a bar chart. The vertical column here contains the frequency or the count of the people that liked particular sports. And it's not necessary to have these sorted highest to lowest and it's not necessary to have these color coded. But it helps with the presentation. Now, a bar chart can also be transferred to a percentage frequency bar chart. Whereas on the vertical column where we have the number of students or our frequency, instead of putting the absolute numbers, which could get quite big if we're looking into the millions, we actually put in a percentage. So, this particular chart is looking at perhaps the students' favourite juices, and we've done a survey, transferred the information onto a bar chart. And if I wanted to convert this to, this to a percentage frequency, what I would need to do is count the total number of students that were surveyed. So in this situation, two plus eight plus 10, plus 6 is 26 and then I'd need to convert each one of these to a percentage so if I needed to convert red to a percentage I'll just grab a pen here and this is the way that I would do this I would 2 out of a total of 26 and I need to multiply that by 100 so that's the number that like the red juice divided by the total number of students that were surveyed and that equals seven percent likewise i could do a similar thing for the orange and i'd get somewhere around the order of 31 percent if i did yellow 39 percent and purple 23 percent So if I replaced this axis, I could actually replace this vertical axis and instead of having absolute numbers, if I replace those with percentages, you would find that the percentage up to here would be 7, the percentage up to here would be 31, likewise the percentage to there would be 39, and the percentage here would be 23. Just another way to present information in a bar chart. I probably shouldn't have scrubbed out the bit that says the number of students. Never mind. Just moving to the final slide. Now, we've had a little bit of an introduction to histograms, but one of the things you'll notice that the main difference between a histogram and a bar chart is the fact that a histogram does not have space it's between the columns here. You'll go back to this bar chart and you'll notice the bar charts have a 
a space. Histograms do not have a space. So let's have a look and see if there's anything else that we could draw from that. Now, notice the value on the x-axis. It's data which is it's it's uh, discrete data. Right? It's qualitative data. Histograms are always categorical or or ordinal data. Now, if I have a small number of discrete elements that I want to represent, then I can identify these uniquely. So you'll see here 0, 1, 2, 3, and we can have negative values as well. Where the actual 0 is located on the horizontal axis is not important, and this actual value here goes right in the center of the column. Can you see here the zero is right in the center of this column? The one is in the center of this column here. Now, when I have a lot of values, or this range here starts to get quite high, then this is how it'd be represented using a range of values. It can be used for discrete values or continuous data. This particular column here, if you know, I look at this column here, it contains all the values between 75 and 80. So in other words, the heights of black cherry tre trees that are between 75 and up to 80 well, feet high. And so you can see here there are 10. Now, it doesn't include the trees that are 80. The next column along here would be all the ones from 80 up to, but not including 85, and so on. This here, the highest column, is given a name. It's called the mode, or perhaps the modal interval. And the last bit of information. Now, if we're asked for the most frequent, or the modal height of the trees, the answer may be presented in either these one of these two formats, 75-80 or 75 to 80, or 75 to less than 80. And as I've already mentioned, you have to be aware that the height of the 80 is counted in the next column. In other words, trees that are 80 or more would be counted in this column here. So, so there you have it. I hope this presentation has given you an appreciation of the differences between some of the graphs that we use. And until next time, bye for now and good maths.